good morning to you all. My respects to Minister Madame Borashit. My respects to Dr. Kitty Kuhn, CEO of MRC. Distinguished government representatives, leaders from the private sector, dear UN colleagues, youth climate activists, scientific and academic experts, as well as NGOs and civil society partners. On behalf of UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, on the 50th anniversary of UNICEF presence in Laos PDR, I am honored and grateful for the opportunity to speak to you all today on the most critical topic that will be at the heart of the discussions taking place these coming days at this very important conference. The impact of the climate crisis on the millions of children and families living in the Greater Mekong River region. These coming days, we will be discussing how to protect the present and the future of the 300 million people living by the Mekong River across countries like Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, and Vietnam. For each of them, the Mekong River represents life itself. Their homes and communities are bathed by its waters. Its waters nourish crops and put food on the table. Millions make their living of fishing and aquaculture. But this picture remains incomplete if we do not mention why the climate crisis is a child rights crisis. If we do not mention how the climate crisis is affecting the lives of 30 million children living by the Lower Mekong River Basin. According to the 2021 Children's Climate Risk Index by UNICEF, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, and Lao PDR are among the highest ranked risk countries in the world. The climate issues affecting the Mekong River are all directly linked to children's well-being, to children's fundamental rights the right to survival and development, the right to education, to shelter, the right to clean water, the right to healthy food, and a clean and safe environment. All of them are the essence of the Conventions of the Right of the Child, the most ratified UN convention in history. But let me walk you through some of the facts that we are facing today. Imagine communities and cities around the Mekong being nearly fully submerged by the end of the 21st century. With most of the delta just two meters above sea level, climate change threatens to wash away life as we know it. Picture the 37,000 tons of plastic pouring out of the Mekong Delta each year, making the Mekong a top marine plastic polluter. Imagine the predicted 40 to 80% reduction in fish and aquatic life by 2040. Our communities, our children rely on these fish for their livelihoods, their health, their nutrition. Imagine the predicted huge annual losses of $34 billion by 2050 due to climate change only in the lower Mekong River Basin countries with 16 billion from lost economic productivity alone, with a devastating impact on child poverty. But as children and youth climate activists remind us every day, nothing about us without us. We truly must face the climate crisis with children, for children, listening to solutions and proposals by children and young people. We cannot fail to include them in the discussions and in the negotiations to tackle the most urgent problems the Mekong River Basin is facing. Let me give you some examples of how young people are not waiting for us and how they are driving the climate action in this region. 21-year-old son from Vietnam's Mekong River Delta, who helped design environmentally friendly trash collection machines to address plastic waste pollution among floating river markets. Or 12-year-old Lily from Thailand, who managed to gain national attention campaigning for an end to single-used plastics. 
She has inspired her peers to conduct beach cleanups and has worked with the Ministry of Education to develop environment center courses. There is Nika from the Philippines and Garit from Mongolia who represented the region as young delegates at COP27's conference of youth last November and handed over a global youth statement to the key decision makers, highlighting just how important children and youth's meaningful participation is for future climate negotiations and climate decision making. The impact of the river's declining health does not discriminate on the basis of state borders or one's nationality. And we all stand to lose too much if the degradation of this mighty asset continues. Large scale development initiatives intended to boost economic growth and progress can sometimes also have negative consequences for the communities. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here not just to raise challenges, but also to provide solutions. For the river, which is the foundation upon which the cultures and people of these countries have thrived throughout their history. Children are and can shape a greener future. But this must be accompanied by a range of crucial measures that governments in the Mekong region and worldwide must take to shield the most vulnerable from the devastating impacts of climate change. Clear actions for a water secure and sustainable Mekong River should be discussed in this conference, as well in all the coming climate conference, like COP28, the UN Climate Conference, very soon. First and foremost, we must embrace climate resilient development policies for the health of the river and urgently adapt the vital social services that children depend upon, such as water, sanitation, health, nutrition, education, and child protection, so we meet the challenges of our changing climate. In conjunction with this, we must significantly increase financing. Global promises to double climate finance must not only be honored, but also expanded to include regions such as the Mekong River Basin. We need to drastically scale up funding for adaptation, prioritizing the essential social services that children rely on in recognition of their unique vulnerability. And we also must acknowledge that climate change is here and that it is altering and jeopardizing our lives. Every government has a responsibility to ensure that children are equipped to navigate life in a climate changed world by providing them with the skills to survive and thrive. As UNICEF, who for the past 75 years has been a long standing champion for the voices and rights of children everywhere, we commit to working with all stakeholders to address the vulnerabilities that children face and to support their solutions to create a healthier river and safer communities. The fourth MRC Summit is a golden opportunity to come together and ramp up action on the Mekong, to include child rights issues in key basin policies directives and prove to our children that we do care about their future giving them a say in their own future. Anything less than this is condemning millions of children to a more uncertain future, to strip them of their hopes and dreams, and to subject them to unprecedented suffering. UNICEF would like to join all stakeholders to cast this net further to ensure that everyone, including children, have the opportunity to collaborate and strive for a healthy Mekong River ensuring that the benefits of progress are shared by all. We can and we must seize this moment together for every child living in the Mekong River. Thank you all. <laughs>